hello, I'm Bill Butts, President of the Population Reference Bureau in Washington, D.C., and I'm delighted to be sitting here with Terry Hall. Uh, Professor Hall, Terence Hall, is the J.C. Caldwell Professor of Demography at the Australian National University and uh, has been researching and writing for a good number of years on matters of demography very widely conceived around the world in Australia and throughout South and Southeast Asia. And Terry has been a uh, very active consultant with the government of, government of Indonesia as they conduct their current census. And so uh, we thought it would be good to have Terry tell us a bit about the census, uh, what's unusual about it, what's problematic about it, and uh, you'll also find here on the website a, uh, an article by Terry about the census, and I certainly hope you'll refer to that, too. Welcome, mm -hmm. Terry. Glad to have you here at PRV. Well, it's always a pleasure to come to PRV, a great sort of resource for uh, the population interests of people. Thank you. Well, give us a little background about Indonesia and the census. Yeah, Indonesia, of course, is the fourth most populous country in the world, uh, the largest uh, Muslim-majority population in the world. Uh, it is uh, a democracy, a fairly young democracy of about uh, 10 years standing now. Uh, it used to have an authoritarian government. Uh, like most countries, it has a census every 10 years just to monitor the changes in the population, how things are going. Because it had an active family planning program, one of the purposes of the census is to see whether family planning has had any impact on population growth. And uh, this year's census in May of 2010 uh, has been a phenomenal uh, effort uh, in order to try to do the best job ever. And my experience and observations of the last month of looking at the census has been that it is an outstanding success. Well, that and is we're difficult, looking isn't forward it? To it. I mean, yeah, the country is amazing. geographically, ethnically, in terms of language, extremely diverse. Very diverse. It, they talk about 300 ethnic groups, but the census acts, asks people about their ethnicity and their language use. And in both questions, they have one over 1,000 codes. Really so there's 1,000 ethnic groups uh, identified in 1,000 codes. One thing we found on the census was there were a lot of people complaining that their particular ethnic group wasn't in the 1,000. So really that's remarkable. one thing that has to be <laughs> dealt with. Well, when you look at the census overall, are there particular aspects of it, uh, problems or challenges or new innovations that, that come out in particular? Yeah, there's a, there's a wide range of things, and I, I will um, I'll be um, going through those in the article, which will Good. be uh, on the website. But uh, probably the most important thing to remember is that because the census has been remarkably successful in coverage this time around, it is going to have a larger population than many people expected. Mm. The old population projections, which were uh, saying that there would be 235 million people in 2010, were based on the 2000 census, which was seriously flawed. There were yeah. many areas of the country in conflict. The census takers couldn't get there. There were many people who were missed by the census at that time. In 2010, the country has been calm. It has been easier for the interviewers to get out. And because of a strong government support and budgetary support, the census uh, people have had the budget they needed to get to the most isolated and remote areas of the country. And so as a consequence, the coverage is better, the count is going to be high, it's count going to be is, higher than the projections based the, on the previous census. The count is going to be higher than the, the official projections done by the government. Yeah. Um, but this is not because of any differences in the fertility or mortality. Uh, it's rather the base population, right, right. at the start. Uh, right. they, they undercounted uh, the 2,000 uh, population was probably around 210 million. Uh, the count of the census was only uh, 205 million. Uh -huh. So what we'll see uh, this time around when the results come out is something over 240 million, maybe as much as 245 million. We just don't know. Uh, the 
the census operations, though, have been remarkable in allowing the Statistics Indonesia staff members uh, to make an ongoing evaluation of how much they have achieved their coverage goals. In real time. In real time. They, uh, they go out in the field and make a list of all the households, and as they list the households in preparation for the census, they ask how many males and females live in the household. So they have basic data on population numbers. Of course, these can change later when sure. the interviewer comes in and fills in a detailed form. But in that listing, having finished one census block, they then will send by SMS, uh, using their cell phones, and what is the SMS? information. It's a short message service yes. uh, that's used. Uh, it's a texting. Yes. Uh, so they text a message to the central office, and that goes into a database. And so they've been able to monitor day by day the proportion of census blocks that have been covered. Um, as we were watching the numbers come in, it was amazing to see all of these millions of uh, text uh, yes. messages come in, go into an Excel spreadsheet, and produce uh, a, a, a real-time uh, monitoring of the census activities. Now, now, it strikes me that that, that particular innovation would be possible to use in a great many places uh, in the developing world, everywhere. because, of course, the coverage of, of cell phones is now practically universal. Yes, and in Indonesia it's especially high. Um, because because people had not had landlines, yes. uh, they moved into telephones through the cell phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, of the 700,000 uh, interviewers recruited uh, for the census activities, without any request that they have cell phones, it turned out that most of them had. Yes. And so the cell phone has had a phenomenal impact on the operations in the field. Interviewers who are having a difficulty are cell phone, uh, telephoning their supervisors, telephoning offices, telephoning other interviewers uh, to uh, help them out. And yeah. this is changing the, uh, the quality of the data that they're getting. Well, I can imagine it, so. It's also, I think, uh, improving the uh, morale and the uh, work habits of the interviewers. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, now looking ahead as we close the interview, uh, census has always produced surprises, otherwise why do a census? Is it possible to look ahead and think of what you've already given us one in a sense that coverage has improved? Is there, is there something else that you think that this census of Indonesia might reveal that is a surprise? I think that the, uh, the fertility and the mortality data are going to be uh, a surprise but whether it's a good surprise or a bad surprise is really for time to tell. And therefore we do the census to find out. Therefore we do the census, but one of the problems is that because the uh, government decided to have a large number of questions, 43 questions, uh, there are many questions that can be used to calculate fertility or mortality oh, rates, which means that this census, unlike the previous census, will probably have four different measures of mortality and as many as five or six different measures of fertility. Now that is different for most and, senses. And that's going Very to be, different. and they're all going to be different and somebody's going to have to explain why they're different. Oh, and why? that's going to be a challenge for any demographer mm -hmm. working on the census. And uh, if your history of looking at Indonesian data and analyzing it is any indication, one of those people who might have to explain it may be you. Yes, uh, but uh, luckily I have a lot of uh, PhD students who have now graduated and they're working in the Statistics Indonesia and the uh, Indonesian universities and they're going to be doing all the hard work. Wonderful. Uh, I'll be able to sit back and relax. <laughs> I doubt that. Well, Terry, thank you for the interview. Thank you for being here at PRB with us and, uh, and thank you for the article. Thanks. Thank you all for being with us too.